Live from the Slackers Sports Bar Studios, this is In the Building with Mike Taylor and Rudy J. Oh, it's at ITB. It's Friday. One more day of abnormal structure. We're back in the saddle on Monday after a long travel week for Rudy J. I am Mike Taylor. That is Rudy. He's literally at home, it appears. Is that your backyard sitch right there at your patio? The patio. Brick house. Dude, what the hell happened in San Antonio? My truck is yellow. Pollen. Dude. Pollen. My truck is yellow. Like, first of all, I don't watch that shit anyway, but my truck is yellow. I haven't been home in eight days. Yeah, it's been parked under a tree, apparently. All that <laughs> no, shit. No, it's, it's just up. in the driveway. It's just in oh, the really? Driveway. No tree. Yeah. Oh, well, I'll bet your neighborhood got some rain, though. Maybe maybe it did, and it shook the trees, and wind see, will shake that shit right off the trees all over your car. See, I don't have the beauty of LG. Like, LG's, uh, you know, a single man. He can park in the garage. My garage, I got uh, toy trucks, <laughs> uh, Christmas decorations. <laughs> Floats I haven't used in yeah. three years. Uh, you you know, can I park in your garage, but you need to clean that shit out <laughs> and organize it. He's calling you out saying you need to get some scene control over your family. There over you there. Go. Get some yeah. shelving, some yeah. shit like that. I have no comeback because he's right. <laughs> Does your wife have stuff for the boot- boutique stored in there too? No, that's in my game room. My game room <laughs> is now a closet. My pool See? table is a closet. Yeah, like I have a pool table that I haven't seen in years yeah. because it's the game room. Game, your game room could be your home studio, you know. I know, I know. <laughs> I'm gonna clean it. One had day. dinner. Had dinner with a guy tonight. Well, Rupert, we had a dinner with some friends tonight. They were asking, so how do you guys generate revenue? They're all loving it, by the way. And I'm like, well, subscriptions on YouTube, memberships, you know, um, subscriptions on Spotify, and advertising. And guerrilla marketing. You know, I told the boys, you know, we we took off like I thought we would, and we'd get, we we reached this plateau now. Now it's like, okay, how do we get a newer audience? Right. And part of that is, you know, while this is a guy show, I mean, I'm down for any sort of thing to market this show to different people that don't know who we are. That's why I've, I've told you before. As soon as we get this barbecue done Saturday, and then we get our remote done at Slackers on the twentieth. Whenever you're ready, man, I think an in-the-building pop-up at the boutique would be cool. We can get some, th- like, a Thunderdome's Wives Day. Wouldn't that be badass? Bring your wives. That would be really dope. So you let me know when y'all ready to do that, man. We'll plan it for sure. Well, All we, right. got some, uh, we got some slacker stuff to do, too. We do. We do. All right. You, so know, what I'm talking, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, for sure. That, that it was your idea. We got to make that happen because LG has the app that we can make it yeah. really dope. Let's do Let's it. Let's get that done. Let's Absolutely. get that done. Let's get it done. All right. It Let's is in the building. Done. It is Friday. Um, it is barbecue week. Saturday morning at 10 a.m. until about 3 or so, we're going to have the annual barbecue. Sales have really gone up in the last 48 hours. Thank Duh. God. <laughs> Duh. You gosh dang panickers. I know. I'm. I'll, 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 every year I worry. And, you know, it's a late arriving crowd, man. You know, and. It was, ticket sales are back up, and we're we're good. We should have a really good day. Um, oh, wait really? Till, yeah, we got a badass. We got some badass cars. LG, you want to ride with? You want? You got to pick up. You gonna? Are you? You can't go, Ken. You've got he fucking go. softball. God almighty! No, I have boxing. I have a Paul oh, Wall boxing. concert. Oh, the Paul I'm Wall. I'm following Paul Wall everywhere during the concert with the camera. When's it start? Because that uh, is my, a pretty my cool shift. Thing. My shift is eleven to eleven. Jesus. When did the fight start? 5 p.m. Okay. All right. Well, there's but no I got to do way. rehearsals and stuff. So, yeah. Bro, there's no way those fights are starting at 5, LG. Maybe 7. Well, no, the show starts at 5. They've got like okay. a concert beforehand. Mm-hmm. And then this, the fights will go in. You know, you've okay. been to these Davies things. It's not, it's more than just a fight, it's like a whole mm-hmm. like performance. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. Uh, what are the odds you can book Paul Wall for in the building? That would give us some exposure. Yeah, Zero. we'll see. Just saying. All right. I'll, I'll try to ask. I'm going to be saying. around him. All right. Well, uh, we got a lot going, man. We got this barbecue. We're going to be at Slackers on the 20th. Um, I'll just get into it now. All right. Join us at Slackers, the studio home 
uh, of our show is Slackers, but we're going to go to Slackers' studio. Uh, 420, we're going to be, it's a Saturday, we're going to be um, at the location in the medical center on Fredericksburg Road for a beautiful edition of In the Building. It's They're bringing in 420 that day with 1,500 pounds of crawfish. I think they've got bands coming. It's like an all-day thing. And we're going to have a special edition of In the Building that day, and I will, we will let you all know what time we'll be doing our show. So that should be a lot of fun. It is Slackers, the official studio, the official bar, sports bar in the building, Slackles. All right. Uh, I got to jump in here. Rudy, those crickets are super loud. Are you serious? Yeah. Let me see. Oh, yeah, Rudy does have crickets. It's like the highest pitch (laughs) cricket sound I've ever heard. There we go. You're going to have to start doing that because it's pretty loud, dude. Okay. Got you. You hear that, Mike? The difference? I do. It's kind of cool. It sounds like we're camping. <laughs> yeah, but if you listen to that on a podcast and don't watch the video, it's going to sound like asshole. <laughs> <laughs> there ain't nothing wrong with getting in some asshole. I mean, Stick depends your on... Cock up her okay, ass. I, I was not... Oh, God. I got to stop talking about assholes. So Rudy traveled all day, which is why we're in this current state you see us in. But I am not skipping out on Fly Friday. About that. There you go. It's Fly Friday. Yeah, that's What's right. Up? I got I'm, I'm all right, but yeah. You're fine. <laughs> all right, man. So that's it. I mean, it's, it's been a long week. I'm glad you're home. I can't wait to get you back into the studio Monday. Tell us about it. UConn was delayed getting to the Final Four, and apparently Rudy Jay's plane was uh, late getting out of Atlanta. Yeah, man. Atlanta? What no. Happened? Yeah, so this morning flew out of Valdosta, which there was only one flight out of Valdosta for the whole day. It was at 6 in the morning. I had to schedule my Uber because nobody drives Uber in Valdosta. So I scheduled my Uber the night before for like 4.30, get to Valdosta Airport, and there's nobody there. So I got there way too early. So fly from Valdosta to Atlanta, it's one of those up-down flights, like literally 15, 20 minutes. So mm-hmm. we get to Atlanta, everything's wrong. I knew it was too good to be true. It was everything was going too smooth. My Uber was on time, mm-hmm. airport on time, Valdosta flight, beautiful. Got onto the airplane in Atlanta, and all of a sudden we're sitting on the tarmac for, for for a long time. And then finally the pilot gets the balls to say, Hey, there's something going on with the air control. Maintenance is coming to see if they can fix it. Oh God. Something's so he's wrong here. See all, yeah, so you start seeing the maintenance people come on. Hour goes by. Pilot finally says, "All right, y'all, this is. We, they can't fix it. We're gonna put y'all. We're gonna get everybody off the plane mm-hmm. and put you on another flight. Put you on another plane." So was it a we're Boeing coming, airplane? I don't know, LG. That's a great question. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. But so when we're coming out the the tunnel. The person's like, go to T6. Keep in mind, this is Atlanta Airport. It's one of them damn train airports where mm-hmm. you can't just walk. You can't just walk to your terminal. Everybody go to T6. We all start running to T6. Get to T6. T6 says, y'all ain't loading here. Take y'all asses to B4. Everybody starts running to B4. Wow. Get to B. Get to B4. San Antonio people, you are not loading here. Go back to T6. Whoa. Leave B4. Everybody hightails it back to T6. Finally get on the plane. Finally get home. So it was probably man, a three-hour delay. Jesus, dude. What airline? I made it home. Delta. And you know what? Let me tell you something. I'm Team Delta. I like Delta's setup. They got the TV on the back of the thing. Mm-hmm. I watched. What did I watch? What did I watch today? Today I watched Top Gun Maverick. Had a boy. Yeah, watch Top Gun Maverick. A great film. <laughs> great film. But now that I'm learning more about B roll okay, and great fucking... B roll like and lighting. Mm-hmm. Like I watch it I watch it a lot. I watch I'm starting to watch movies a lot differently now. But uh, don't let I'm, him I'm, get I'm, in your head. Enjoy the movie. Yeah, I'm, yeah it's I'm like careful. Down. You're gonna you're gonna start not liking movies. <laughs> 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 or you're gonna be the worst no. person to go to a movie with. Yeah, so so I was with the production company yesterday. We wrapped yesterday, and we started having drinks. And the production company's like, 
They start telling me about all these. Oh shit! Where am I at? Where'd y'all go? You tap the video button where you. There we go. Your video. Uh, they start telling me how awful Scarface is. The original. It's awful. Sounds yeah. like a bunch of fucking millennials. Dude, and like, and they're telling me what all these movies about? that are actually awful because of this, because of that, and I'm like, I I don't know if I want to be a part of this because oh, I want, you know. and I'm like, yo. I'm watching the movie as a fan. I'm not watching the movie as somebody that wants to make a movie, right? Scarface is right. great. It's a little yeah, long, like the, but it's great. The, the, Cube, the Cuban right. accent was an original. Ask right, a man. Cuban person. Ask a Cuban person. It was bullshit. I was like, oh, why? The right. soundtrack is fire, though. But no, anyway, I'm Team Delta, man. They they, they shit the bed today, which is why we're not I, in the studio. I'm Team Delta because I get to pick my seat. Southwest, I got to cool. check in right 24 hours exactly and pray I'm not in C group. Yeah, that's why you got to pay the 20 extra bucks for the early bird access so you get A group every time. Damn, LG, I'm broke, man. <clears throat> I don't want to pay I mean, for that. 20 bucks isn't that bad for being able to pick <laughs> your seat. I go for the exit row usually. Yeah, so I don't leave again, fellas, until April 21st. Which is the day after our our situation, our um, pop up okay. slackers. Oh. All right, good. We're gonna, good, gonna good, have good. to have some discussions about that then, because that yeah. puts a wrinkle into some of our our issues here. So you were what going, issues? He's going on vacation. What? Day? I got things to do. He's got I'm things going, to do. I'm not we're, going anywhere. Right, but he's unavailable that following week, which is why we talked about having uh, my boy. Jose, who does pickles for dinner, run our show that week. We need to talk about this off, off the air. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the, yeah. This is hey, an off the air discussion. Yo, Vegas, Georgia. Did I miss it? Did we miss any? I didn't miss none. Did nah. I? Did I miss it? Did not. Okay. You did not. No, nah, okay. we're fifty-five episodes strong. Haven't missed a day. Damn right. Made us stay up till four thirty at night. Well, I got in trouble for being stoned and drunk, but we got it done. Still, we went to work. Hey, hey are you damn millennials? You Gen Zers? We went to work. Those father muckers would have skipped work. Hey, oh, I've got hey. chap lips. I can't make it to work. We go to work at well, Gen X. To be fair, most jobs you can't show up drunk and stoned to do your jobs. So. Not my problem. <laughs> Still went to work. Still went to work. And not only that, <laughs> Slackers and Texas Cheer Liquor were happy yeah. with the content. That's all that matters. Speaking of Texas Cheer Liquor, we're, there's an update for Thunderdome. So yesterday, yeah, what happened? I, I promoted. 5% off if you go into any one of the seven Texas Cheer Liquors. We'll just make this the live spot. Screw it. 5% off if you go in and get the margaritas to go or you get the um, the cocktail mixes to go. All you have to do is say in the building. I've been corrected. Mr. Singh. He has now decided, because he loves his heart and he's poodle thunderdome, any order, not just the cocktail mixes, not just the margaritas, no matter what you buy at Texas Cheer Liquor, henceforth, going forward, for in perpetuity, uh, that's a drop. Board of Vida, all orders at Texas Cheer Liquor are 5% off for Thunderdomers. All you have to do is say, in the building. Tell I love the cashier. How you spun that too. In the building. If you like would have just read that, the text like, that he sent, it said entire purchase. And you, you've just made up margaritas and, and cocktail bags on your own. No, that was in the text. That was mentioned. No, that it was said me- entire purchase, 5% off your entire purchase. It said in the original text he sent us. You know, I'm trying to make this look cool. Like, I'm, I'm playing some, I'm doing some magic here. And you're, 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 yeah, I know you're trying to spin it, but back. you got to own it. No, I'm not owning it. I'm trying to make the sponsor look cool. Like he's wow, he's these guys are so badass. I've decided he to let cool. all he, orders be. He fighting. offered it originally. You're the one who limited it. That's not how I read it. Where it was just the cocktail mixes. Wrong. Why was that said? I let me hang on. Let's go back to the original. He was text. pumping I the had. margarita and the cocktail mixes, but at the end of the text, it literally says five percent off entire purchase. Okay, let me see. I mean, I'm gonna, I need to confirm. I need confer- I need confirmation. Keep in mind, yeah, who you're dealing with. You're dealing with LG. He de- I specialize like in details. Yes, yes. Yeah, to the detriment yes. of our creativity, some nights. 
see. All right, so don't matter. Don't matter what the details are. Forever going forth, as long as we're all alive and we have a show and he has a business, all in the building purchases are five percent. Whether you go in there and get a cocktail or you get a bottle of hooch or some tequila or you go in there and get a cigar, no matter what you buy, your total this is more excuse to spend more money in there because you're gonna get five percent off. Why would you go in there and buy a pack of smokes? Go in there and get go in there and load up. Get you some whiskey. Get you some tequila. Get you some cigars. Get you some beers. Get you a bunch of stuff. Get you some vodka. Yeah. Some vino. I'm having, I'm having blue, blue note tonight. I'm having nice. blue note tonight. Juke right. joint whiskey. This they're out of. I want to. Yeah, they're out of Crafted in Memphis. Yeah. This puts hair on your balls. Shit. Hell yeah, Memphis juke joints. You bet your ass. Anything you get in Texas Cheer Liquor from now on, all you have to do is tell the cashier in the building, 5% off. We have our own discount, Porta Vida, at Texas Cheer Liquor, the official liquor store of in the building. All right, we gathered around. We settled. What's on your mind tonight? Have you had time to pay attention to stuff? What's on your? What's in your head other than your flight sucked? Um, the only people, the only other rookie that's done what, Wimby is doing is Tim Duncan. But the, but the biggest difference is Tim Duncan was in the playoffs. But the only person that has put up the numbers that Tim put up his rookie year was mm-hmm. Victor Wimbanyama. So I'm not a hater. I'm just a winner. And I and I have high expectations for Victor because everything that went into it. I know it seems like I'm coming off as a Victor hater. I'm not. I love Victor Wimbanyama. I, love I think you're being too hard on him. Yeah, maybe I'm being a little bit too hard on him, but again. Tim ain't winning no th- – what did they win Tim's rookie year? 40-something? I they went to the playoffs, Mike. Yeah, let's let, let's let rookie Tim, Tim Duncan never, come back. Tim let's resurrect Timmy. Let's run Timmy out there with fucking Devin Vassell and Jeremy Sohan. And 75 Mike, they year ran old him out there with Mario Ellie and Avery uh, Johnson uh-huh. and Sean Elliott. Yeah, okay. Let's see. Two of those guys you just said have their number up in the rafters. Retired. Mike, you're going to get your number retired at the 18th at the Frost Okay, Bank. that's not true. Oh, All so right. now you're saying they don't deserve to be have their numbers in the top? Mike, Avery Johnson's not retired anywhere but San Let me think of a CC. What was it? I think he wore Mike. 50. Did he wear number 50? Was it 55? Played the Naval Academy. He's kind of a tall guy, kind of skinny, but really athletic. What was that guy's name? Uh uh, got Paul, Paul Johnson. No, uh, Robert Davidson. No, not Rob Davidson. Oh, David Robinson. That's right. David Robinson. Okay. I, I'm, okay. I'm being unfair to my boy. Let me ask you this. Is Bruce Bowen's number retired anywhere else but San Antonio? And I love Bruce. I'm asking you a real question. He wouldn't Is have Avery, become the player. Okay. No. Johnny Moore. No, but there's reasons for Avery, that. Johnny Moore. Avery Johnson. What the fuck? I'm just doing one, two, three. Stop it, Apple. Rest in peace, Steve Jobs. Johnny Moore, Avery Johnson, Bruce Bowen. They don't get retired anywhere but in San Antonio, bro. They're getting ready to run nine of these motherfuckers off the roster soon. You're getting ready to see massive overhaul with this roster. Massive. All right, let me ask you something. And David David was also four years into, into college. All right, let me ask you something. Not David, Tim. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you four names. I'm going to give you five names, and you tell me which one don't, uh, don't go. Okay. David Robinson, mm-hmm. Tim Duncan, Manu Ginobili, Tony Parker, Avery Johnson. AJ, clearly. Let's not talk about who's retired. Let's, not compare, let's not compare Jeremy Sohan and Trey Jones to Avery Johnson, though. Trey Jones is a backup. He's a solid backup on a good team. Trey, Trey Jones wins the title with the 99 team, Mike. Okay, because of David Robinson and Tim Duncan, I guess. Yes, yes. Okay. Exactly. Not, the, only way that, the, the only way this actually computes and is even a fair comparison is as if David had been nine. I keep saying David. Had, had Tim had been 19 when he got here. And he had David fucking Robinson coming off an injury year, so he was rested. If Devin Vassell only played with his left hand, 
he's better than Sean Elliott. I'm gonna let you have that. Okay, so okay, so so failed season here in here in two weeks or three when they give Wimby the undisputed, not even contested rookie of the year. Yeah, but he didn't he didn't win any games. Okay. I just think you're being hard. Okay, so okay, fine. Failed rookie year. Fire everybody. Trade Wimby. Let's go. Let's trade Wimby. Let's do that. And let's give Trey Why Jones. Why you got to be so extreme? Why let's you got to be so extreme? You're being extreme. Let's give Trey Jones a 10 year guaranteed deal because he's awesome. Let's put his number up there because he's better than Avery. Come on, man. That. I didn't say that. <laughs> I, no one, I don't, I'm just trying to keep it in perspective. Clearly, Timmy had a lot more help. And you're also having me compare two dudes I love. This is not fair. You're asking me to. I'm compare. I'm com- comparing children here in Timmy and in Wimby. Wimby, right, man, had, Wimby almost Look. had a quadruple double against the defending champion tonight with three starters out of the lineup: no Vassell, no Sohan, no Keldon Johnson, and he had a fucking quadruple double. He's you twenty. Know you know what's crazy, Mike? I guess you Jokic. Hold- you hold your kids to a higher standard than you hold Wemby to. <laughs> well, they're my blood and guts. You see what I'm saying? Like you, you, you're hard on Gen Z, but when it comes to Wemby, oh no, check his diaper, make sure he's okay, put okay. some powder on his booty. He's phenomenal. He is phenomenal. He's incredible, and they're going to win. They are, they are, they just are. The Spurs are trying to get good again. They are all about winning. They, the last couple, they tanked so they can get this kid. Pop mismanaged the roster. He did the first half of the season. He did playing Sohan at point, which was a waste of everybody's time. And now we're going to blow some shit up here. And next year, guys are going to be held accountable. If we're sitting here in a year and Wimby's not in the postseason. Fine, I will take a knee. But we're gonna it's gonna take a whole year before I'm gonna give up on this. And if they go to the playoffs not, next year, then you need to give up on this. And let this rookie. I'm not go. I'm not I'm not giving up on them. I'm just saying, like, it'd be one thing, Mike, if they miss the playoffs, right? But the the reason that I'm surly mm-hmm. is they're worse. Because they, they part of that was finding out who can play with this guy. And a bunch of them can't. He came in and affected the games of some of these kids on this roster, which means they got to get their asses out. Although they have been very competitive for the last 60 days. They have. They've got good wins over Phoenix, over OKC. They don't get blown out anymore. They gave Denver hell with three starters out of the lineup, and and, and number one almost had a quadruple double. Now, are you going to be mad if, because of the improvements that they've made in the fourth quarter of this season, mm-hmm. if they say, "I like the improvements we made, mm-hmm. let's run it back," let's run it back. I'm gonna be mad. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Then cool. I'll meet yeah. you halfway. Okay. I'll meet you halfway. I'll meet All you right. halfway. I'm gonna be mad. I bet you there is at least four new team, new guys in the regular rotation next season. At least four. Agree to disagree. If not five. If not five. It's all about winning. Um got another team that's all about winning my houston texans (laughs) i don't know if you were in the air or not no okay i mean i don't know if you were in the air or not i was uh no no remember i texted you no no on this news today on on the Diggs contract so the texans the the texans trade for stefan Diggs. Mm -hmm. come come to find out come to find out last night or today that they have told him, we're not guaranteeing your deal will be on this season. He's an experiment. According to that Adam Schefter at Mickey, as part of the blockbuster trade to acquire Stefan Diggs, the Texans wiped out the final three years of his contract, giving Diggs the ability to become a free agent at the end of the season. So he's not sure if he wants to be in Houston long term, and they don't give a shit. They're fine with it because at the end of the day, what is he? Nothing but a wide receiver. They're going Wait, hold on. next year. Twenty second uh-huh. time out. Let's 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 rewind to our your iHeart days, my iHeart days, my Alpha Media days. Let's rewind and let's uh-huh. let's be ra- let's be radio guys for a minute. Okay. 
he's gonna be a cowboy after next season. Oh shit! You want his brother? No, let me say he want. They've been wanting to play together for quite some time. Mm-hmm. They don't give a shit about Brandon Cooks. CD Lamb is gonna be there. I, I can see Diggs. Out. I can see Diggs is considering this contract isn't guaranteed. Yeah, and Casario, and Casario, GM of the Texans, mm-hmm. and and D'Amico, yeah, they're not gonna mess around with Diggs if it's not if it's not like groundbreaking and they're not like in the AFC title game. Because keep in mind they were in the divisional round this year, yeah. So they're not in the AFC title game or in a or in a Super Bowl. She, we'll see. Dig, uh, Diggs may fine. be with his brother in Dallas, and that's uh, that, that would be that's that would be very guy. Cowboys. Yeah, and if that happens, that goes to show you how they do business in Houston and how they do business in the Metro 6. We're going to bring in Stefan Diggs, and he's got one year to prove his ass before we give him an extension, or he's out. And he and it, it's a mutual deal. He wants to make sure he wants to stay in Houston. Cool, we'll wipe out the, the, the three years left on your deal after this year because we don't know if we want to give big money to a wide receiver because we're about winning. We ain't going to just go money whipping wide-ass receivers. I love the way the Texans are doing business. Dallas, of course, would go get him because he's famous and it would, it would help sell more tickets, not that they need any more help doing that, and, and because he could reunite with his brother because they ain't about winning up there. They're about feel good. They're about storylines and bullshit. And Let me tell you something. Stuff. Let me tell you something, Texan fans. I saw Cam Newton. I saw Dak Prescott. I've seen quite a few rookie quarterbacks have great seasons and then everything comes to a screeching halt like he just ran into a wreck on 410. Dak Prescott sucks. So what I'm telling you is I get I'm not hating on what that y'all accomplished in this short amount of time. But just because he had a great rookie year, speaking of CJ Stroud, don't mean shit. Doesn't I mean agree. shit. I agree. He needs to be good two years sure. in a row. And I know, I, and I know, Texan fan doesn't want to hear that. They're every Texan fan is riding hot. All three of y'all, all three of y'all, Texan <laughs> fans. <laughs> I think there's like fourteen. Okay, my bad. All, all fourteen of y'all are riding high. Yeah, I Holy might be the fifteen. Shit. Yeah, right. That thing is set up for that thing set up for that thing set up for a long for a decent run of three or four years before they have to pay CJ. Tell you this, so you're, as you're talking, I agree with you. I, the quarterbacks, I I come from the school of you need to be good two years in a row. Just because you're good for six months, don't make you great. Look how look how they put Jalen Hurts on a pedestal after his one good year in Philadelphia, and he came way ass back down to earth. If it weren't for the weren't for the butt tush, the tush push, his ass wouldn't have. They'd have lost Time more out. games than they did. You don't want you wouldn't take Jalen Hurts over Dak Prescott. I'll wait. I'm talking about C.J. Stroud right now. Uh, you brought up Jalen Hurts. I'm asking you a question. Uh, if I asked me, you, if I only left, oh, you only there's only two quarterbacks no, left on the Hurts board over Dak. But All I ain't right, taking. So, but I'm not taking Hurts over C.J. Stroud. The no. season that C.J. Stroud just put together, that's what that's what guys are good, they're going to be good for the rest of their career. Do I don't I do I would be shocked if there's a sophomore slump by Stroud. He was Dak amazing. Looked, do you remember? Do you remember Dak's rookie year? He Mike? wasn't as good he as CJ. Fun. I don't think he was as good as CJ Stroud. It was so. It was more about Ezekiel Elliott. I think so. Yeah, I think. I think. Okay. Well, okay. I mean, it, it's right. no, I'm not arguing with you. I'm just asking. No, I do. I mean, look, Dak had a great rookie year. I love Dak Prescott. I, I appreciate Dak's run. Unfortunately, the team failed him before he blew his his leg out, and he ain't been the same dude. And he melted down in the playoffs just like they all do because that organization has shitty culture. But C.J. Stroud is, I mean, it's one year in, but I can, and I'm not trying to put the man in the Hall of Fame, but as good and efficient as he was with the roster he had in his first year, in his rookie year, um, that was shit that guys that wind up going to the Hall of Fame do. Not saying he's going, you know. He's going to have adversity. They got film on him now. He's going to have a more difficult schedule. And, you know, he's got turned up. But this come, look what they're doing around him. They went and got him their Zeke Elliott, so to speak. Joe Mix, 
You know, he's, is Joe Mixon still, still good? Is he still good? Yeah, he's solid. He's on the back end, but he's he's better than what they had last year in Houston. I'm excited about them Texans. The Texans may go to the Super Bowl next year. I really think I've been listening to you since 2007. Mm-hmm. I don't think you've ever said that. They've never had a team that was good enough. This team's good enough. When they waxed Cleveland's ass in the postseason and played the Ravens to the wire, that kid, I love that kid. C.J. Stroud's awesome. He's a, he's a bad. I don't think that was a fluke. Man. They they found gold in that dude. I love that guy. Him and Justin Fields breaking the Ohio State quarterback curse. Because remember, Bama had that as well. Yeah. And then they had Hurts and Tua yeah. and Mac Jones. Because remember, Ohio State, their quarterbacks. I mean, Joe Burrow was at Ohio State, but he transferred to LSU because – yeah. Of Justin Fields. Mm-hmm. But hmm. I don't I, know. I, I like Fields. I don't, I'd love to see him figure it out in Pittsburgh. Stroud's a different animal. Stroud's just a – he's just a stud. He's awesome. He's fan, He's just great. And uh, that's it. I was just super imp- – because, again, he, the intangibles, the way he leads, the balls that he played with, those intangible things, those miscellaneous things that you don't see in the in the book, the way he led that team and the way he played with his stoicism and just impressed the shit out of me. Dak impressed the shit out of me that rookie year, but Dak plays for the Cowboys, Rudy, and had Dak, not, had Dak been, and we talked about this yesterday, had Dak been a Ram, I'm convinced that Dak eventually wins a Super Bowl in, in L.A. with the Rams, with McVay. And with that defense they put together in L.A., right, know, right. Bud wide receiver with Cooper Cup and Odell Beckham now, and those guys, Dak would have had a ring, too, by now. Let me ask you this. Mm-hmm. Take the massages out. You don't like C.J. better than you like Deshaun Watson. Because keep, keep in mind what Deshaun was doing. Deshaun was up 24-0 to zero mm-hmm. in Arrowhead. And yep. Bill O'Brien shit down his leg. Mm-hmm. Deshaun, the Deshaun was great. At that, I'm not talking about what we've seen at Cleveland. The two month, the two years off clearly fucked Deshaun Watson up. Mm-hmm. But after one year, are you telling me that you like C.J. Stroud better than Deshaun Watson? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think Stroud's Stroud is a Stroud is an effing stud. And he's and Stroud's not going to be caught. Stroud's not an idiot. Clearly, Watson's a knucklehead, or he, at the very least, weird. And Stroud's just comes from a great family. Played for great coaches all of his life, and not that Watson didn't. Stroud's just more of an all-around quarterback than Watson or Dak, for that matter. Stroud is that he is the prototypical superstar. All the tool. He's a five tool dude. I just love the guy, man. Love him. So, so the answer is yes. I think he's better than Watson. Wow. The Texans got that, crazy that's, lucky. That's that's saying a lot because I feel like Deshaun was dealing with incompetent coaches and not near the t- and not near the talent that CJ yeah. has. No, I agree. So they failed him. Like. And the thing about it is the reason I bring that up because nobody's really talking about that. That's mm-hmm. why in the building's the best. Like not first take, not all the bullshit that you see everywhere. Nobody's asking like, "Hey, is this kid? Can he beat Deshaun? Because he hasn't, you know." Deshaun was there. Keep in mind, there's the video clip after the season ended of JJ Watt going up to Deshaun Watson saying, "Hey, man, we failed you. Yeah, we failed you." Mm-hmm. And I just wonder, like, okay, is he is he Deshaun? Because Deshaun was that guy. Right, There's nothing around him. Well, now I take that back. He did have DeAndre Hopkins. Mm-hmm. I take that back. But now with what CJ has this season coming up, mm-hmm. shit. Yeah, man. Watson wanted out of Houston before we ever knew about the bullshit with the massage parlors. So Watson would have been traded. He would have gone somewhere else. Had let's say Watson had never had those issues in the massage parlors. Watson winds up somewhere not Cleveland, I'm sure. And Watson would be a Pro Bowl quarterback, right? He'd be, he'd be in that Tier 1 elite, guys. He's got that talent. But like you said, he did miss two years. He did get in trouble. He has dealt with it with, you know, off-the-field bullshit. 
and it's messed his game up. And I don't know where he is anymore. I, you know, when Cleveland gave traded all that shit and gave him all that guaranteed money, I thought, you know what, good for Cleveland because Watson's a stud. But Watson was awful last season. Awful. Yeah, he was awful, Fuck. and what and what hurt, not hurt Houston, but keep in mind Houston has Cleveland's first round pick. I want to say this year coming up Man. and next year, but yeah. Cleveland made the playoffs, so it wasn't what it turned Without out to him. It, Right. So the thing about it is, what was it, Flacco? So the thing about it, you Flacco. thinking it that at the time you're like, oh shit, they're gonna have a hot pick, but they still yeah. have two first round picks over the next couple of years alongside of what they're already doing. So, mm -hmm. Houston, poll. You want to do a poll? Best team in Texas? Oh, Best not close. Tex the Texans would blast their ass, especially if it were a playoff game because we know what the Cowboys do in a postseason game, and we know that D'Amico Ryans gets his team ready to play in the playoffs, and the Cowboys don't, no matter who the hell they bring in because they're shitty culture. Dallas may I don't. I think Dallas is sub-500 next season. I think Houston wins its division and may go to the Super Bowl. So Houston's clearly past the Cowboys now. Well, they're not beating the Chiefs. Probably not, but that because they're, you know, they're Sean Kemp coming up in the age of the Chicago Bulls. They're Carl Malone in the age of the Bulls, but they're better than the Cowboys. You asked me about the Cowboys. I don't think it's close. Houston's far and away the better team. Period. Well, Dallas, well, the, the bookies have Dallas at 10 and a half. So that's not under five hundred. I'm with I well, what's Houston? You take are you? Well, I'm, I don't I don't know what Houston is. So if you were 12. a gambling, if you were a gambling man, mm -hmm. under. you were taking the cow. You're taking the under. Under if it's ten and a half, yeah. Dallas is going seven and ten next year at best. Wow, at best, this thing's been wow. set up to fail. All right, it is in the building here on yes. Love You Hard TV inside the Slackers Sports Drinks and Games Studio. It is now time for the Orlando Kill Punch of the Day here on In the Building. I've got a good one. Who are you punching? I want to punch the mayor of the city of Dallas, Texas. <laughs> Eric <laughs> Johnson. Just trying hey, to get, get political get points. Just talking bullshit. He knows he's full of shit. All right, let me set this up. I, you know, obviously, you, you, you know where I'm going. So the Chiefs want to renovate Arrowhead. The Royals want to, they want a brand new stadium. And so the Chiefs and the Royals in the last 18 months or so have been, they have put forth before the city council and the taxpayers of that county where the Chiefs and the Royals are up in Kansas City. Hey, man, we need to increase taxes by half a penny or whatever because we're going to renovate Arrowhead, build the Royals a brand new stadium. Kauffman Stadium's outdated. Cool. So the voters overwhelmingly shot it down. So the Chiefs, if the Chiefs are going to renovate their stadium, they ain't doing it with the taxpayers' money. If the Royals want to rebuild their stadium in that county, they, they ain't doing it with the taxpayers' money. And so what's probably going to happen is, so what? Ha so the knee jerk is outside of the area is, ooh, the Chiefs might be moving. They may be moving, but they ain't moving more than about 20 miles. If anything, the Chiefs will rebuild a new arrowhead on the Kansas side of Kansas City. Now keep in mind, Kansas City is in two states. It's in Kansas and Missouri. It's, it overlaps the border. It's weird. People like you can people that live in that city commute back and forth to different states every day because they're on the border. The Chiefs may move to the Kansas side of Kansas City. They're never leaving Kansas City. That's insane. The NFL would do all they could to stop that. They're, they've turned into a marquee franchise. That ain't happening. So the reason. And I'm punching the dumbass mayor of the city of Dallas. Eric Johnson's his name. He has come out and said that he would like the city of Dallas to start a process of seeing if the Chiefs might want to come home because they originated in Dallas in the 50s as the Texans. And he thinks that North Texas can support a second NFL team. That is bullshit. San Antonio don't want a second NFL team. <laughs> And the Cowboys don't even play here. There ain't no effing way we're going to have a second team in Dallas. That, and he knows that he is bullshitting his constituents like most politicians do to get brownie points with his voters, playing on, playing on poor people and their hopes, and it's unfortunate. So punch the mayor of Dallas, Eric Johnson. That's bullshit. Now, the Chiefs not leaving that area. Stupid. Okay, now, now let me ask you this. 
I'm on my devil's advocate shit today. Uh, you are, man. Okay. Why can L.A. have two teams but not Dallas? Because they don't have the Cowboys. If the, if the, if the Cowboys were in L.A., L.A. would have one team. Rudy, USC is bigger than the Rams and the Chargers in L.A. <laughs> they really are. Shit, the Raiders are bigger than the Rams in L.A. still to this day. And I, you know, I, I, and I so I don't have any data. So I, I'm a big fan of um, uh, I'm a big fan of a show on the iHeart L.A. station, the afternoon show. Um, Papa Dacus and and Money Matt Money Smith. You ever heard of Papa Dacus? Pop, he played at USC. So no. they, all, they okay. Well, they they do this all the time, where they talk about how this the town does not give a shit about the Rams. Every single one of the Rams home games, at least fifty percent of the crowd are going for the other team. You know that show there. They still do Raiders segments on Mondays during the NFL season. They'll discuss what the Rams did. They'll wow. discuss what the Chargers did, and they'll discuss what the Raiders did. But they're big in on that station, 570 in L.A. Um, USC football is king in that town. When USC is good, they are far and away more popular than the Rams and certainly the Beach of Chargers. If the Cowboys played in L.A., they would be one team. There ain't no way that Dallas can, Dallas can support a second NFL team, but it would be suicide for that team. They wouldn't sell Ugh. another drop. Damn it, LG. You're they crazy. Would, they wouldn't sell. You're crazy. They Mike. wouldn't sell. You know, that, like Dallas is like They'd be top worse five. than the Clippers to the Lakers. And guess what? The Clippers survived, Mike. That, I'm, you see, you helping my argument. I forgot all about that. Angels, little brother. Dodgers. Why do you want to be little brother in your own city, though, if you're an NFL franchise? Okay, well, first of all, kids, the Chiefs are never leaving. But they're not. If Dallas and Houston could support two teams. They could. They could. Financially, yes. Economically, yes. They could. That's all I'm talking about. They could, but the Chiefs aren't leaving. And Eric, okay, that's fine. We can we can argue about that. But Eric Johnson knows damn good and well that that's not going to happen. Just jumping on neon signs so his constituents, ooh, Mr. Johnson, he wanted a second NFL team. I want to vote for him again. Bullshit. Typical politician crap. Who are you punching? I'm going to punch DeJounte Murray for being bipolar. DeJounte Murray. Okay. Yeah, that's a good he one. Did, he, he, was on, he was on another podcast, and he said, mm-hmm. yeah, I got a text from Greg Popovich telling me I took 40 fucking shots, passed the fucking ball. Greg Popovich is a one-of-one. You can never recreate this man. He's like a dad to me. Mm-hmm. Um, when I tore my ACL, he hugged me and squeezed me and told me, this is nothing. I enjoy yeah. the work. He went on for a good three minutes about Pop. Loving it. Okay, all. so, right. Okay, so then when Pop came to you, according to you, on the whatever Matt Matt Barnes and Stephen Jackson podcast, you're like, well, when Pop came to you, I was like, hey, you know, we got to get you out of here. We're going to rebuild or whatever. Mm-hmm. If he's like a Pop to you, what, why would why would you elect to say yeah you know what go ahead and trade me right. like a lot of these dudes like all these I've heard I, I don't want to exaggerate I've heard 10 to 15 dudes bloviate about pop but none of them want to be here yep so at some point I gotta call bullshit yep like you 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 spent three minutes on this podcast I don't even remember which podcast it was going on and on about how great pop is. But the minute you had an opportunity to get out of here, you bolted. You, according to you, pop came to you and said, hey, we're going to suck for a while. You want to get out of here? You said yes. It wasn't your thing. You didn't force your way out. Okay, cool. But then two days ago, you talk about how much you love him and he's a father figure to you and he's, your, he's another dad to you and this and that. Well, if, if all that's true, because, again, he's like that with Tim Duncan. And at the end of the day, when Tim had a great opportunity to leave to Orlando, he chose to stay with his godfather, Greg Popovich. So all of y'all, I mean, I know I'm punching DeJounte, but all these guys, even Le- LeBron included, y'all love Greg Popovich, 
but none of y'all will sign on the dotted line. Nope. So I'm punching DeJounte Murray because I'm calling bullshit. I, I get it. You want to respect your elders and shit, but it's bullshit. It is bullshit. And it's not because of the city of San Antonio or the I can't market myself. That's bullshit. All those guys, in theory, love Pop, but they don't want to play for him because they don't want to. They don't want to be the player that's required to be playing for him. Every time a team comes into town, the other team star always makes it a point to come running over to Pop, hugging and kissing, and it's gone. It's gone on for twenty years. Whether it was D Wade, LeBron, Shaq. Kobe, all these guys have always come over to Pop, dapped him up, love you hard, love. They'll they'll play for him in the Olympics, but they ain't playing for him in San Antonio because it's the college atmosphere and it's an old school scene and you're asked to sacrifice yourself for the greater good of the team and they ain't were they were not having that shit. You could not be more right. That's the that's the best point I of all the things you've said since we joined. I could not agree with you more on this one. It's 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 hypocritical and it's bullshit. Yeah, I don't get it. I'm like, yo, he's like I, a dad yeah. to me. He he squeezed me. He <laughs> said he he didn't say he hugged me. He said when I told my ACL, he squeezed me and told right. me I put in the work and this is nothing. So, but as soon as Pop cracked the door and said, "Hey, there's a little crack in this door. You want to get out of here?" You said, "Yeah." You you sprinted. You turned into Usain Bolt. <laughs> Yeah. But he's your pop. Yeah. Get the fuck out. Get the fuck. So I bet you can find this on YouTube. This goes back years ago, maybe six, seven years ago. I was, it was, um, I think it was during the playoffs. It was back right before Timmy retired. God, it might be eight years ago. It was on TNT. And, and the guys were talking about this very subject, how all these superstars love pop, but why can't San Antonio get free agents? Nobody wants to come here. Going all the way back to Jason Kidd in 2001. And they got into this topic, and Barkley and Kenny Smith and Shaq, all three of them, call, they, they all call bullshit, too, just like you're doing. It's like, would you have wanted to play for Pop even though he's so demanding? Shaq's like, of course I want to play for Pop. I love Pop. Pop, you know, my dad knew Pop. I love Pop. And Barkley's like, of course I want to. Why wouldn't you want to play for Pop? You want to win the championship. I didn't ever want a ring. Had I played for Pop, I probably would have one. And Kenny's like, oh, yeah, yeah, Pop. I would love to play for Pop. If anyone who wants to win will, would want to play for Pop because he demands the best out of you, the best version of you. The work that is required to win the title is required in San Antonio. So, And they just basically call bullshit. LaMarcus Aldridge is an example of that. Aldridge comes down here and realized, oh, man, I got to work harder than ever for these fucking people. Now nah, I'm good. Biatch. And just got by because he's good. I'll never forget, Doc Garrett, of all people, told this story, and I think they pissed off the Spurs something pretty bad, but that's okay. Doc Garrett didn't give a shit. Doc Garrett told a story, and we all know where he got it. Number nine from France, Pony Tarker. I didn't say it. I just I said Pony Tarker, so I can't be quoted on this. Doc Garrett had it on good authority <laughs> that the summer that Aldridge signed here, there's this now it's not famous because few people we're the only show on this is the only show on the city that's ever told this story. Tim called up Aldridge. Hey man, welcome to the team. I'm excited you're here. This is awesome. Can't wait to work with you. And Aldridge is like, yo, my God, I'm happy to be here. Love you, Tim. I want to, I want to learn. Teach me, man. Tim's like, yeah, cool. Let's work out this summer. Cool, cool, cool. So they arranged, they arranged to spend a few days working out and they went up somewhere in the hill country up where Timmy has that big old house. And Timmy invited, invited Aldridge up to the house to spend a few days and go through the off-season workout that Tim went through. And Tim had a very different workout, running up and down hills, flipping tires, doing jujitsu and shit. And about halfway through the workout, Aldridge tapped out. Like, dude, I'm, I'm tired. Tim's like, dude, we're only halfway done. Let's keep going. Aldridge did not finish the workout that Timmy wanted to do and tapped out and that story trickled down to members of the organization pony tarker <laughs> somehow doc garrett got the news but so the point being aldridge got here and thought god damn it's too they, they make you work here 
and then mailed in mailed it in the whole time here, and then finally they got rid of his ass because he, well, he Aldridge was not willing to put the time in to win. Now these superstars like D Wade and shit that have won titles obviously are good enough to win titles without Greg Popovich, but they didn't they, 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 they didn't want to put the work in. Although I, I throw D Wade under the bus maybe unfairly because Eric Spolstra demands fucking greatness in Miami, so maybe maybe that's wrong of me to do that. But you're right. Guys all over the league, low, low, pop, 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 pop. Okay. You don't want to play for him, though, you know? And, and I got nothing to do with San Antonio. If Pop's in New York, ain't nobody going to the Knicks either. Well, the thing is, Pop also took the – fell on the sword for LaMarcus Aldridge, telling, telling, the whole, telling the whole world, it's my fault LaMarcus Aldridge wanted to trade after his first year. I tried to turn him into Kevin McHale. He fell on the sword from LaMarcus for the first couple of years. And the, and the reason why he did that is because LaMarcus was the first real free agent that the Lakers wanted, yeah. that Phoenix wanted. Like, mm-hmm. that was the first real free agent yep. that the Spurs landed. So Pop yep. was like, all right, you know what? I'll massage him a little bit. Mm-hmm. LG, you punching anybody tonight, man? Yeah, mine should be pretty obvious. I'm punching Rudy J. Oh, good. <laughs> Here we go. Okay. Welcome home, Rudy. Your nice, beautiful house where you have a game room and a garage and probably some other rooms, and you decide (laughs) to pick the noisiest place in the entire lot to do the show from, right next to a highway and a cricket farm. (laughs) Punch Rudy J. (laughs) Do you live right Uh, off 1604 or something, dude? And are those crickets, or is that like a... A Those are crickets. Air. <laughs> I thought it might because it's so loud and consistent. I thought it might be like the fan from your air compressor. It's just, <laughs> just squeaking away. I know you want to smoke your cigars. You probably don't. Smoke no, inside. it wasn't even that. It wasn't yeah, even yeah. that. No, I don't smoke inside. No, it was. It got was little kids in their sleep, man. No, nah, it's ten sleep. o'clock. He said they're a late night, night family. Yeah, I, they're a late night. We're a late night family. There ain't nobody <laughs> sleep. I mean, I was giving that. Mike Taylor shit for doing a show in the closet. I'd rather have you be in a closet than out there. <laughs> <laughs> that shit is loud. Just trying to Damn, stop that's I'm trying to mute. I appreciate your effort. <laughs> All right. It is Orlando Kill, the official family lawyer in the building. If you are in the midst of a divorce or getting ready to quit a YouTube podcast and you need to get out of a contract, call Orlando Kell. <laughs> no, no, he does family law. My man Orlando, ah, hit him up. He does divorces, D-I-V-O-R-C-E, divorce, divorce, divorce. It's not funny, but you know what? Some days all you have left is your humor. And at least when you're going in there to talk to Orlando, having prob- arguably maybe the worst situation of your life, He's Thunderdome. He's seen it all. And there's nothing he has not seen. And he'll deal with this as professionally and comfortably as possible. If you are in need of a family lawyer, it is Orlando Kell, 210-775-4995. Or you can email him directly at orlandokelllaw at gmail.com. All right, let's end with let's end with entertainment news, shall we? It is in the building on Love You Hard TV. Now I did it. Live from in the building, a guy's favorite segment, Mentertainment. My God, there's two of them now. Here they are, Rudy J. and Mike Taylor. All right, a massive report came out that said that Ciroc was going to end its relationship with Diddy over the bullshit that he's going through right now with the investigation and the lawsuits and the diddling and all this kind of thing. He should change his name to Diddley. Ooh, what was that? Anyway. <laughs> so Diddley, a.k.a. Diddy. Bad boy. Was said to be about to lose his endorsement with Ciroc as his support. The report I like claimed Ciroc. That, Ciroc is good. I agree. And the report claimed that 50 Cent. I didn't cent, know y'all were vodka guys. I I'm like a huge vodka. vodka guy, yeah. Okay. 50 Cent was apparently about to become the head, the head face of Ciroc. Okay, Ciroc listening. has denied that tonight. Sources say? connected to Ciroc Vodka tell the most credible news source in America, TMZ, that there are no truth, no rumors to the claims that Fitty is going to get kicked off of Ciroc. 
This, of course, in the wake of Diddy and Ciroc and its parent company, Diageo, Diageo, going separate ways earlier this year. So Diddy's still Team Ciroc. They're not abandoning, abandoning him just yet. And they're certainly not going to turn it over to 50 Cent. That would make Ciroc look shitty. It's one thing you want to drop Diddy as an endorser, but to go over to 50, that just goes to show that that makes you look immature. Fine, dump 50, but don't just pick up 50 cent just because. You know what I'm saying? Well, this Ciroc, is the thing. Ciroc's called bullshit on that report. Well, this is the thing. Diddy still hasn't been charged with anything. Correct. Everybody is, Diddy is taking a beating. I haven't seen a beating like this in a while. And there has been no charges. None. Not lots, a one. Lots of smoke. Lots of smoke. I'm not saying that he ain't guilty. All I'm saying is he's still to this day. Now, you know, he's been popping up around Miami. He's been riding bikes. And he we've been seeing him around there. But, yeah, they're not going to put up 50. Like, 50, look, I love 50 Cent. 2003 was a hell of a year. Get rich or die trying. Mm -hmm. I had just, I, me and my wife were still newlyweds in the, in the dating phase. That album is near and dear to us. We spent a Don't lot of time partying. It's still yeah. okay. We spent a lot of time getting fucked up to that album and having a good time. But that's not somebody that I I don't know if I want representing my brand. Correct. Ciroc may dump him still, but they're not dumping him yet, and it's damn, damn sure not for 50 Cent at this point. Right. I mean, do they even? They don't even need a spokesperson. Everyone they knows that Ciroc is now. Yeah, there's Ciroc. Yeah, they, like Diddy did, did his work. Diddy exactly. did his work. He he's done enough work to put it out there. Yeah. And that, and to be honest though, LG, since you're a vodka guy, Ciroc is probably fifth on your list. If that. Oh helps. yeah, it's good. Okay. I like okay. Uh, I like something called Green Mark, which is a Russian vodka. Russian vodkas are always the best vodkas. Which means you like potato vodka versus like grape vodka. That's Ciroc well, yeah. is made from grapes, Ciroc isn't is made it? From grapes, grapes, but yeah. yeah. I love vodka. Like, I love it. It turns me into a monster. See, my that's wife what whiskey does for me. See, mm. my wife my wife has banned me from vodka. Oh. My, fam my family has banned me from vodka. Because with vodka, I'm like, grass ain't fucking green. Don't fucking tell me it's green. Like, you know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Like it's vodka, olive. Yeah. Vodka, vodka and I, are, yeah. we love each other, but we're just not compatible. <laughs> Got it. Tito's is the only vodka I absolutely hate. And you know what it is with Tito's and learning and what work my time spent at Texas Cheer Liquor? Their marketing is so great that people go to it. But it's actually not even close to the best vodka. No, it has a flavor, and vodka is supposed to be flavorless. And I can always tell when a drink is made with Tito's. I'm like, oh, this is mm -hmm. Tito's, right? Oh, yeah, it's Tito's. Correct. Great. Yeah, anyway. All right. The My Mike Taylor Mike. Show's own, the former Mike Taylor Show's own, Ron Jeremy is in the news. Is this he is dead? You. No. He's been exonerated. Magnum see? Dong. See, y'all had y'all had put that man in jail. You put him in cuffs and you you ostracized him only for him to beat the case. Ain't that a bitch? Ain't that a bitch? You know my Ron Jeremy story, do you? Do you? I've ever told it to you? Well, y'all were next to each other in the urinal and you look. Yes, sir. I've seen the look. hedgehog. I tried to see the hedgehog, but I don't want to come off as a weirdo and get thrown out of one of the swankiest restaurants in Beverly Hills. You're a weirdo, yeah. Mike. Took a piss next to the greatness. I almost got on a knee and just started bowing. So back in August of 2021, Ron pled not guilty to over 30 counts. He was in worse trouble than Diddy. 30 counts of sexual assault, including 12 separate accounts of rape in the L.A. area Shit. over a 23-year period. Ron's been in prison since his arrest in June of 2020. However, since November of last year, he was released from jail and allowed to reside in a private residence because he's lost all of his marbles. He's nuts. 
Oh. Massive, massively declining health. Highly doubtful that he sees the end of the year. That's unfortunate. So he's basically been in house arrest, and he don't he have he hardly knows who he is. A year prior, he was declared incompetent to even stand trial. He looks and like cons- shit. He looks like shit, and a conservatorship was filed, and basically he's being taken care of by handlers. Well, something called the Blast has this. Ron, whose legal name is Ronald Jeremy Hyatt, is now apparently off the hook as of last week. The long list of all those charges have all now been dropped. All of them. Wow. So he's just going to live out whatever days he has as an basically an invalid under the care of handlers laying in a bed till he just passes out and Was dies. he locked up this entire time? He was locked up for two years until November when he his, his basically he was in the infirmary for a year in the prison he was in. I wonder if he gets any compensation for being locked up. Damn good question. Or maybe his his kids or his his family or whatever. Damn good question. You could just take it out of the fund of all the black people that are locked up wrongly. Give There's them some few. money. There's a few in there. All well, right, a few fellas, million. I don't think that fund exists, but. Did y'all see the Did y'all see the movie <laughs> Casino? Joe Pesci. What? Robert what? De Niro. Obviously, y'all know How Casino. How dare you even ask me that? Throwing it out there. We're still getting I hate to know it. Fucking we, amuse you. We're still getting to know each other. Well, that whole scene there was based on the the very famous Tropicana Hotel in Las Vegas, Nevada. The Tropicana Hotel. One of the most historic hotels in all of Vegas, which for years was owned and operated by mafia members out of New York City, has closed its doors. The famous Tropicana has gotten old over the years and was losing business out the ass. And obviously you can't we don't the mob does not have nearly the, you know, power that it once did in this country. The Tropicana has closed in Vegas. Have y'all been to the Tropicana? Y'all have been to Vegas so much. I've been, yes. Cool. And it did have that old school charm to it. Yep. The guy that ran the... Go ahead, Rudy. No, this is what I'll say about Vegas for those that haven't been and you may be looking to go soon. That's me. It's way more family friendly now. and And I got this on account from people that actually worked in the hotel I stayed at. People are gambling a lot less. Mm-hmm. And Vegas, Vegas, they know numbers better than anybody. So they've transformed their uh, business model from, hey, we're gambling. No, we're not more. It's not gambling anymore. It's like, okay, people want to come with their kids. Ah, so it's a lot nice. more family. It's a lot more family friendly. Just so you know, if you're like, like perfect example, LG. If LG goes to Vegas, you're going to see a lot more strollers, LG. Huh. Mike, are, they, you and Nate, if, are they still banned at the wind though? That was one of my favorite things about the wind. They banned no kids. The, I, I, that part I don't know, LG, <laughs> but they they transform their a lot of places are transforming their business model and making things more kid friendly. So if yeah. you're the single couple, you may want to go to Miami or may want to go to LA or go to Cancun because Vegas now you're going to see a lot more kids and a lot more strollers. I can see that because Vegas. You don't have to spend a lot of money to entertain your kids. You can just take them to each of the different theme hotels and just show them what's there for free to look at, and they'll be happy. Mm-hmm. Like, my well, my kid, my 15-year-old had a blast. I wasn't with them. I was working, but my 15-year-old loved it. Because, they, I mean, even my 5-year-old, there's the M&Ms and Hello mm-hmm. Kitty. And there's a lot more shit for kids. The because- Bellagio Fountain Show. And right, ride, yeah. Ride the, the gondolas at mm-hmm. Venetian. So well, that sounds all the, fine the, and for good. For the single people that hate kids, and I don't mind y'all hating kids because I hate my kids sometimes. It's a lot more kids. I bet there's still some fun I can get into that don't involve kids. No, oh, there's still hookers on every corner uh, and weeds I just clouding the air everywhere hookers. you look. So. Dude, but dude the, the strip club I, the adults. strip club that me and my wife went to, Mm-hmm. What was it called? The honey oh, pot you mean or the, something? The hidden one that was behind a library door that I still... That was in wonder- Houston. No, that was Houston. Oh, was that Houston? Okay, my bad, my bad. I'm the getting all your debauchery we, mixed up. The strip club we went to. Grade A. My wife U- loved it. USDA filet mignon. <laughs> <laughs> that 
That shit was Wagyu. Tiger Shushimi. Yes, sir. It was Wagyu. I was like, yeah. yeah. Well, and you know what I did? Tropicana. Then when I left, I was like, I don't recognize these charges. <laughs> <laughs> of course not. <laughs> Love it, dude. So uh, the, the, the leader, of the, the, the most famous ruler of that place back in the day was Frank Costello. Did y'all see The Departed? The Departed, Martin Scorsese, Leo DiCaprio. Maybe. Wait, which one? The, ori the original Maybe or the Matt Damon Leo? The, 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 no, The Departed with Leo and Martin Scor uh, uh, Jack Nick. Because they're the original. Yeah, yeah. I saw, the, I saw the I saw yeah. the remake. It was fantastic. Matt Damon. No. Matt Damon. The Departed. So they paid homage to. So Jack's character in The Departed was portrayed. It was based on Whitey Bulger, the longtime notorious Boston gangster. But they named the character Frank Costello as a tip of the cap to the great Frank Costello who ra ra uh, ran the Tropicana in Vegas all those years. Because Scorsese loves him some mafia, as we all know. All right, did we just lose him? Yeah, really checked out. Might be the best time to go ahead and end the show. Hey, man. All right, so that's all I got for my entertainment news. Closing thoughts in the, from the Slacker Studio <laughs> before we go to bed and get out of here. Slacker Studios. Love y'all. Appreciate Slacker. Love y'all. again, I got to get some... We got to get some stuff to put in the studio. I got to holler at Frank. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get that done. All right. Barbecue Saturday, 10 a.m. till 4. Come hang out. Look forward to seeing everybody. Wait till you see the car we got to drive you in, man. You're going to love it. It's going to be great. It's going to be awesome. Awesome. Has it been an hour? It's been over an hour. For real? Yeah. Over an hour. Oh. We done. All right. Thank you to Slackers. Thank you to Texas Cheer. Thank you to Orlando Kill. See you boys Monday. See y'all at the barbecue, then we'll see you Monday back up here on in the building. Love you hard. Peace out. This program was made possible by contributions from viewers and listeners like you. Thank you. You're still here? It's over. Go home. Go.